This section is going to be all about iterating over objects and treating objects like arrays. So you've kind of got the best of both worlds. You've got the encapsulation of objects and you've also got that iteration functionality. But before we get into that, what I'd like to do is do some revision on some of the existing PHP array functionality, some of which you might be familiar with, some of which you might not. I guarantee you're bound to learn something. Before we get into that, let me just say that I record in high resolution, so no need to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon and welcome. First off, I'm going to pull in Symfony var dumper and I'll set up my auto loading. So composer requires Symfony forward slash var hyphen dumper. Okay, and then I'll need to add auto loading. So for this one, I'm just going to be dumping stuff out to the terminal. No need to have a server, browser, etc. We're going to work with this array to start off with. As you can see, it's a city and it consists of name, country, population, latitude, longitude. And we'll just go through some PHP functions. So the first one I'm going to do is array underscore keys. And if I run that in the terminal, it just gives me back the keys from our city array. To go with that, we have array values. So what this is going to do is just give me back an array of the values and the keys will be uh, replaced with numerical index values like so. In array, we'll return a Boolean true false value of whether a certain value is in the array. It takes two arguments, needle and haystack. Needle being the value that you are looking for and haystack, of course, being the array. So let's look for Berlin in our city array. Okay, so we'll dump this out and over to the terminal. Okay, it's returning false. There is no Berlin in our city array. If we try Frankfurt, however, we get true. Excellent. Okay, array key exists. It also returns a Boolean value, true or false, on whether a particular key exists in an array. Again, it takes the arguments needle and haystack, needle being the key that we're looking for, haystack being the city. So, is longitude a key to our city array? Let's go and check this in the terminal. And, of course, the answer is true. Array search is pretty cool. Basically, what you do is you provide array search with a value, and then it lets you know what the key is for that value so definitely useful i'll try to think of a good use case for this uh, when we move on to the practical stuff again takes a needle haystack combo of arguments and for this one we'll go with germany and hopefully it should give me back a key of country over to the terminal and there you go so we get the key back of country hope that makes sense to you Array count values lets you know how many instances of each individual value there are in the array. So we'll demonstrate this by having a couple of 10s, a couple of 20s, a couple of 30s, just one 40. And we'll dump that out. So this is something you could use for maybe counting votes or counting the number of people with the same name in a class or in a group. As you can see, two of each except for the 40 where there's one. So a very useful one there. Array unique takes an array and strips out all duplicate values, so you're left with just unique values. So we'll stick with the same array that we've just used in our array count values, and we'll replace that with a uh, numbers variable and pop that into that one as well. And so array unique, and we'll drop our numbers uh, array into there. Now, one thing to note here when we go and look at this in the terminal, just check the keys because might not happen the way you think it's going to do. Run that. As you can see, the duplicates have been removed, but if you look at the keys, the ones that are left still have the same keys. So it's not going 0, 1, 2, 3. It kept the original keys 0, 2, 4, 6. Okay, array column. This is really cool. I use this quite a lot. It's best used on multi-dimensional arrays, and what it will do is if I have um, a few arrays which all have same or similar keys, then I can pick out the values for just a particular key, or in this case, it's calling it a column, so for a particular column, and this will take the array as the first argument and the actual key that I'm looking for as the second argument. So we'll dump this out. 
and as you can see we just get the values for the country so similar to when you do a database query and you're just querying for one field you can have multiple records which just include one field another cool thing about this is it will actually find um, properties for objects so say I have an array of objects or city objects like I've created here then I can do the same thing I can just say array column I'll choose one of the class properties and it'll treat it just like we did with the associative array. So in this case I'm expecting to see Mumbai and Frankfurt and that's exactly what I get. So I like that one and when we move on to the object oriented stuff I'll probably use this as well or I'll find a use for this. Let's try out population and as you can see we get the same result. Array on shift will add items onto the beginning of an array. And so I'm going to stick with my uh, a column array and you'll notice that with this one it gets passed up by reference so I'm actually going to mutate my column array instead of returning a fresh array. So I'll dump this out and as you can see there 230,000 and 567.89 have all been added onto the beginning of the original column array. Array pop pops items off the end of the array so the last items in the array i.e the ones with the highest indexes if it is an indexed array will be removed from the end okay with this one we are again mutating the original array but we also return the item which has been popped off at the end of the array so we'll dump both values as you can see 785000 has been popped off the end and there's our original array with that value missing having been popped off array shift this does the opposite of array pop what it does is it shifts items off the beginning of the array so as you can see 200 is returned as a shifted item and it's also been removed from the column array array push does the opposite of array unshift it pushes items onto the end of the array rather than onto the beginning first argument is the array and then after that you can pass in multiple arguments which are the values that you want to push onto the end of the array when we go and look at this we should see one two three and four five six added on to the end of the array like so so lots of decent uses for these such as caching queuing systems let's move on and look at how to compare arrays array diff takes multiple arrays and what it will do is return any values which appear in the first array which do not appear in subsequent past arrays let's demo this so our diff will be uh, the return value and we'll pass array 1 then array 2 now for this I don't expect to see any results the reason being that there are no values in array 1 which are not in array 2 so I just demoed it that way to make it clear to you when we do the reverse Obviously in array 2 we have the value 5 which does not appear in array 1. So quick look at the docs to be clear on this one and the rule is items in array 1 which don't appear in the other arrays. So you could pass array 1, array 2, array 3, multiple, then just take two arrays. Array intersect returns values from the first array which are then found in the subsequent past arrays. So array 2, array 1 both have one two three and four i guess you can think of that like the overlap in a venn diagram by the way this recording is just a small sample from my complete object oriented php developer course for more details about the course check the discussion below array slice is so named because it returns you a slice of an original array and what you do is you pass in the index that you want the slice to start from and also the length that you want the slice to be. So if I pass array 2 and I say I want this to start at index 2 and to have a length of 2 then I should get back the values 3 and 4. Let's dump this out to make sure I'm not talking rubbish and that's exactly what we get. So let's take a quick look at the array. So we're starting at index 2 and it has a length of 2 so that's the slice which we get back range okay this is pretty good for quickly knocking up a new array and what you can do is give it a range a start point and an end point and it will fill in all the values in between for this one i'm going to say 0 and 23 and so this will give me an array with 24 values 0 to 23 0 indexed of course 
And a little pro tip also works with letters. So next time you see a colleague typing out the alphabet, it's up to you whether you let them know that or not. Array map allows you to iterate over an array and mutate it by performing the same logic on each iteration or on each item in the array. The first argument is a callable. So for this, we'll just use an inline callback function. And when I say item, I'm referring to the current item in the array with each pass. For the second argument, we pass in the actual array. So for this, we'll use array two again. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to square each item in the array. So one should return one, two should change to two, uh, to four, three should change to nine, etc. You get the picture. Run that, and there we have it. One, four, nine, 16, 25. So it's mutated each item. What I want to do now is actually, instead of changing items, I want to filter out items which don't meet a certain criteria. I can do that with the array filter function. Annoyingly, the thing with this one is it takes the arguments in a different order. So for this one, it takes the array first and then it takes the callable. So look out for that. I guarantee it will catch you out at some point. Again, into the function, I shall pass the item, which will be the item that is um, being currently iterated over. And for this, I'm just going to say, I want the item to be greater than nine so or eight. So if the item is greater than eight, it will be returned. If not, it will be filtered out and removed. My returned array there doesn't have any items which are less than nine. Now, on occasion, you might find that you don't actually want to filter on values. You want to filter on keys. Easy to do. We just pass the third argument and we'll use this constant array filter use key. And what that will do is um, tell PHP to filter by keys rather than by values. That's pretty handy. Array combined takes two arrays and it kind of zips them together so that the first array becomes the keys in a new array and the second array then becomes the values in the new array. So I've created a multi-dimensional cities array here. We're going to loop over that and with each iteration I'm going to zip the uh, keys array together with the city using the array combine function. And I think what I'll do in this instance to demonstrate this is the return value. I shall write that back to another multidimensional array, which I shall call key value cities. And you'll see that the keys have been matched up to the values in the cities array. Let's go and dump this out and you'll see exactly what I mean by that. Okay, so now we have a multidimensional array, array one, name, country, population, all the keys matched up to the corresponding values. With array merge, you can merge one or more arrays together. If you're using strings as keys and those keys are found later on, then it's the ones which are merged in later on uh, or in the later arrays which get merged in and used. With this, I'm just going to merge our cities array and I'm going to add an extra one to this. So we should end up with a multidimensional array with three elements. The third one having been merged in. That doesn't look quite right. So I've missed some square brackets, I think, around my uh, new array, which I'm merging in. So I'll just go and place square brackets around this city array here. And then if I go back and run this again, it should look right. Okay, so now my multi-dimensional array now has three arrays within it because I've merged a third one in there. With array replace, you can replace keys in the first array with keys from subsequent arrays. So I'll demonstrate this using uh, like some configuration. So here's your global configuration and then your development configuration comes after that and then your own local configuration. So you, you're working on your own local environment. You'd want your values to overwrite those from the dev config and you'd want the dev config to overwrite any keys from the global config. So you're getting something more specific. So the way we do this is array replace and then we just pass them in in the order that you expect to replace keys. So I've used comments to show what I'm expecting to see here. As and when the keys are found in the later arrays, then they are replaced and that's exactly what we get. Okay, let's have a look at array sum. So you should be able to guess what this one does. Basically it takes an array of values and sums them all together. So this is uh, to be used with floats and integers. Let's go and 
try this out. Okay, so add them all up together and we get 58.6. Array product is similar, except instead of getting the sum, we get the product, which of course is done through multiplication. So product equals array product, and then we'll multiply all those together. We'll go and check that out. And so 1915.2. With the list function, we can take an array and assign um, values from that array to variables. So for example, if I create a values array like this and then I have the list method, I shall use the variables a, b and c. Then using the assignment operator, each of those variables will be given values from the values array. So if I dump out a, I get 23, let's dump out c. As, as you can see, that gets given the value 67. Explode allows us to take a string and convert it to an array by choosing a certain character within that string to use as the separator. So in our case, we're gonna use a comma separated uh, value string. And so that means that we'll be using a comma on its own as a separator. That's our first argument. The second argument is the string itself. Let's dump this out and hopefully we should see an array of programming languages. Okay, excellent. PHP, JavaScript, Python, and C. Implode does the exact opposite. It takes an array and converts this into a string. So very similar with the arguments. The first one is the separator. So our um, array elements, when they become a string, will be separated by a comma. And notice I'm also using a space here just so that we can tell the difference between our created string and the original CSV string. So we'll dump this out, we'll call it languages string. And there we go, PHP, comma, space, JavaScript, comma, space, you get the picture. We shall finish off with something called compact. And this is where we take a bunch of loose variables and we compact them into an array. So our names of our variables here name, country, population, latitude, longitude. These will now all become the keys in the array and the values will be the values which were assigned to those variables. So the way we do it is compact and then we just pass in the names of all the variables that we want to compact. Let's dump this out and it should make things more clearer for you. And there we go, we have a single array which has been built using the variables whose names we specified. So that now concludes our array revision. I hope you found that interesting and informative. Let's now move on to iterating objects and treating objects like arrays. So I've covered quite a lot of ground there. Hope you've enjoyed it. Give it a like if so, and don't hesitate to share. If you want to help other developers like yourself, that's what good developers do. And one last thing, if you want YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material every few days Details of my schedule can be found on the community tab of my YouTube channel homepage.